What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake and today's video is part two of a three-part series on film emulation. And if you missed the first episode, I recommend checking it out here. And in that video, we really only scratched the surface on film emulation. That just kind of lays our foundation. But in today's more intermediate tutorial, we really get into the grit of film emulation and start making our digital image feel more like film. We're going to be bringing in real film stills, analyzing elements like flaring, halation, grain, and overall image sharpness. And then by using only Resolve's built-in effects tools, we're going to be recreating those elements in our digital image. And if you're an overachiever and really want to take things to the next level, part three, we're going to be diving even deeper into this topic. And I'll begin showing you some of the third party plugins I use as alternatives to the tools built into Resolve to get even better results. We're going to cover how to build out your node tree at the group, pre clip, and post clip level for more efficient grading. And of course, we'll have a whole section dedicated to shot matching, as well as some excellent shot matching tips that are going to make things incredibly easy for you. I also want to mention we're running a limited time offer on the masterclass for the next seven days. So starting August 11th and running until August 18th, you can pick up the masterclass for 35% off. And if you're wondering if the content in the masterclass is any different from the free content we post here on YouTube, 100% yes. The Freelance Colorist Masterclass features 10 modules with over 27 hours of training and we're constantly adding more to it. With FCM, you get access to a private Facebook community where we hold weekly competitions and you get tailor-made feedback on your entries. You actually get an opportunity to make money because at the end of every season, we have cash prizes up to $1,600. You also get complete access to 100 gigabytes of professionally shot footage for you to practice with. Not to mention there's some awesome discounts on things like Film Convert, DaVinci Resolve Studio if you're in the US, and many more. And to top it all off, there's also a 30 day money back guarantee so you can join with absolutely nothing to lose. As an FCM member, I know how valuable the course material is for somebody who's just getting started or someone who just wants to brush up on their skills. The trainings and downloadable content are always available as you'll have a lifetime access to the course. Not to mention the incredible community we have on Facebook where you can ask questions, get feedback, feedback and gain insights. So don't miss out, join before the offer ends and you can do that by clicking the link up top or in the description or in the comments below. It'll be pinned in the comment section. Now, if you're just here to see how I build this look, feel free to jump around based on the chapters of this video listed in the description below. But if you really wanna learn about the why behind film emulation and walk away from this video with a better understanding of each step of the process, I recommend grabbing a notepad, sitting back and watching this video from start to finish because there is a lot to unpack. So with that being said, let's roll the intro. All right, jumping right into this one, uh, I want to address a couple things uh, just before we actually get started and building this look. That is one that film emulation can be very technical, but it's also very artistic. And so what I don't want for any of you is to place the importance of the technical accuracy above um, what's what I would consider the artistic expression, because um, sometimes those two can compete and we may sacrifice some of the art of, of this technique and color grading in general. Uh, for technical accuracy and I just don't have any interest in that so keep that in mind as I go through everything here um, So in a past video I teased a film emulation process and you guys were quite receptive to it um, I saw a lot of comments that were asking why I didn't touch on film emulation And the main reason is that I, I wasn't trying to do a full-on film emulation tutorial It was more of grading your footage um, And then I also used a film print emulation LUT in building that that grade um, but because there were so many in such interest in, in controversy over omitting that halation effect, which is, well, I'll get to exactly what that is if you don't know in just a few minutes. But because that was uh, such a hot topic in the comments section, I decided, let me go ahead and make another video and we'll do a slightly more technical film emulation tutorial. Um, and this would actually be less of a film print emulation, more of just a film emulation in general. So that's what today's video is about. Um, I want to touch on some more of the techniques and some more of the technical elements here and possibly even more videos after this one if you guys are interested. Now, another thing I mentioned in that video is that grain sharpness should be matched with the image sharpness. And after doing a little more research, I'm not actually 100% sure I still believe in that as much as I did before. Um, the reason for that is that after examining some film stills, which we'll pull up here, um, I think for a lot of true film, the grain is usually sharper. And I think the reason for that is that our images captured on film aren't known for their sharpness necessarily. It's typically a less sharp image, less perfect image. There's a lot, I mean, it's an analog uh, format, so it's going to look more natural and less digital. And part of that digital look is sometimes sharpness. We're actually capturing the image in pixels. The way that film images are captured is not a digital sensor that it's controlled electronically. It is a piece of organic material, a sheet of film um, that is briefly exposed to light and that light's coming through the lens. It makes contact with the photoreceptors on that piece of film. And then through a chemical process, uh, it is transferred into, into the image that we would have seen it as in real life. 
Um, so it's a very different process than digital image capturing. But I mean, we're talking about a digital process with ones and zeros versus an analog process with chemical reactions happening. Because of that, there are some some downsides and some upsides. And some of the upsides are um, obviously dynamic range and skin tones often look incredible. Um, but some of the downsides are elements of that chemical process that lead to what some would consider flaws in the image, but that we've kind of come to love them. And so now we actually try and re uh, create those and emulate those those film characteristics in our digital work to make it look more like the actual film stuff so back to the whole grain sharpness thing the image as i was just explaining is usually less sharp than what we consider sharp in digital world but the grain is oftentimes more sharp it's a chemical process that's happening on the actual film itself um, so regardless of how sharp or blurry the image is, the grain sharpness, and even the presence in general may vary based on a number of factors, but we can create a similar effect here in Resolve. And then we also may want to add some saturation to the grain that is a, a an option in Resolve's built-in film grain effect, OFX, and that can be very useful. We're probably going to experiment a little bit with that here in this video. Um, but aside from the grain inhalation and glow, there are a few more elements that, and effects that we can add to our footage uh, to achieve a more film-like effect. Um, but I'd like to work our way up, starting with that video last week, kind of just being an, an introduction and using a film LUT. And so today we're just going to kind of build off of that and go a little bit more technical with things as opposed to just strictly creative. There are some more technical tools out there to create what would be considered a more true to film um, look, but I think 99% of you are going to mostly benefit from creating this fully in Resolve without any additional plugins. But for those of you that are interested in looking for some of those other options, uh, Film Convert, Film Convert Nitrate is an excellent plugin for Resolve. Uh, it's also very affordable. And then Dehancer as well as an excellent plugin. So let's go ahead now and start diving into building our uh, sort of film emulation here. And like I said, you can take this as far as you want to. Uh, you can limit and omit some of the effects that we're going to be throwing in this video. Um, but overall, I think this is going to help a lot of you. And it's going to be, um, if, you, if your client asks for sort of a film look or if they've shot it to be sort of filmic, uh, I think this is going to be a look that uh, your clients are really going to like. Or if you're the director or DP and you're coloring stuff yourself, then I think this is going to really step up your game and allow you to create some incredibly professional looks. So the first thing we're going to do is a proper conversion. And we're going to do that using the color space transform. So we're going to drag that color space transform onto this node. This was shot in the Aria Mira. And of course it was shot in Aria Log C. So we're going to set our input gamma to Aria Log C. And our output gamma, this is sort of that Rec. 709 look. And also, let me go ahead and address this since some of you are asking. Our color management settings are DaVinci YRGB and the timeline color space is Rec. 709 gamma 2.4. And that's it. No, no ACEs yet, um, but we do have that live training. So if you guys want to check that out and see what ACEs is all about, be sure to check that link down below uh, to get yourself signed up because we have an awesome webinar coming up on Monday, August 9th. So input gamma, that's still at RE log C. Output gamma, we're gonna set this because we're doing a film print emulation uh, with the film lot built into Resolve. Those are meant to accept a Cineon film log uh, input. And so our output for this color space transform is gonna be Cineon log film. So we're inputting RE log C and then we're outputting Cineon film log. And that's gonna give us the best result on the next step where we are just gonna right click on the node, scroll down to LUT, and then in film looks, we're gonna select Rick 709 Kodak 2383 D60. That's my go-to, my preference. However, of course, you can also uh, select any of the variants here of the film looks uh, LUTs that are built into Resolve. And obviously I prefer the look of the uh, 2383 LUT, but you can go with either of them. And then the uh, D60, D65, and D55, those are just different uh, color temperatures of that film LUT. So you're gonna see the same thing, same results, you're just gonna have different uh, color temperatures. So let's go ahead and drag this over here and we'll start labeling these nodes now. So this first one, our second one is actually gonna be called our LUT. And the first one is our CST. Now these are gonna go at the end of the node tree and that's gonna to lead to a much more technical um, and proper conversion of everything. The whole image pipeline is gonna be managed uh, more effectively this way. Um, so we know that all of the nodes happening prior to the CST is going to be in the RE log space, which gives us a little bit more room to work with. And then our LUT is going to be properly applied directly after that conversion. And we're not going to be adjusting the properties that the LUT has applied and done so in a beautiful way. And on the last video doing that grading your footage episode, I didn't necessarily do it this way because I wasn't as concerned with how technical the film look was. I was concerned with making a good looking image. And sometimes those, those two don't always coincide. Um, but in this case, we are specifically trying to create a film look. So that's why we're doing it as, as technically accurately as we can. So now let's go ahead and start adding some nodes beforehand, uh, before the CST. And you can just do Shift S, which will add a node prior. So you see that just threw in our node before the CST. 
and we're just gonna bring this one over here and this one's gonna be our primaries. Now in our primaries node, there's a couple things I wanna do because you see this image was pretty dark whenever we started. Um, and also a, a great thing to mention, if you're on set shooting and you have the intention, you know that you're gonna be doing a film print emulation, I actually recommend doing your best to protect your highlights at all cost and trying to uh, preserve those details in the highlights. And if you have to crush the shadows, oh well. Uh, film does a lot better job of capturing the highlights and it, it kind of suffers in the shadows. So if you're trying to emulate it, it'll help you um, get a better result by underexposing a little bit. So in our primaries node, we're just gonna take our shadows, actually no, that's logs. We're gonna go into our primaries wheels and uh, make sure this is reset. We're gonna take our lift and just pull up a little bit. Maybe the same with our gamma and actually come back down a little bit on the lift. And my goal here is just to bring a little more details out in the shadows without crushing those blacks, um, all while making sure that the highlights stay pretty protected and pretty low overall. So right in here, that's probably gonna be fine. And may, might even take some of our highlights here, pull them down just a touch, and using our shadow slider, bringing this up some. That's good, that's giving us a little more information back here in the shadows. Now our next node, Alt S, I'm just gonna label this one Sat. And this is gonna be our saturation node. And here we're gonna jump into the RGB mixer. And here we're gonna take our red slider, max it out, our green slider and green output, max it out, and then same for the blue. And now we have a pretty saturated image. Um, that's okay, what we're gonna do is in our node key tab on the key output, we're gonna cut this in half. We're gonna type in 0.5. So we're setting this to half the intensity. So the output of all the changes in this node is gonna be set to 0.5 as opposed to one, which would be the full intensity. So we're just cutting it in half. Um, and we may come back and adjust this a little bit more later if we think it's still too saturated, but for now, uh, we're just gonna leave it right there. So at this point, we have a, a pretty overall, I mean, just a nice looking image. All we've done is add saturation and um, in our film LUT and through our proper conversion here, um, we just did a little bit of work in the primaries and you could call it here, this this could be a, a fully functional film emulation. As the comments came in last time, uh, I know you guys wanted to see some more of the, the characteristics of true film introduced. The artifacts from that chemical process be introduced here. So how do we add those? The halation, the grain, the glow, um, this, the, the flaring, how do we add that in? So today's tutorial, we're gonna add in uh, a blur effect, a, a halation effect, and a little bit of a glow just to give it that soft, dreamy film look. So the first thing we're gonna do from here, it's gonna Alt S again, and we're actually going to use a simple OFX here. We're gonna go to our Gaussian blur and drag this on. And obviously that's a little bit too blurry. Uh, what we're gonna do is zoom in so we can see um, all the detail in this image, bring this to zero, and we want to just increase that blur a touch. We don't want to make it too sharp. We don't want to make it too blurry. And I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to go ahead and bring in a, uh, a still that I have saved here. And as you see here, we have much less sharpness than what we'd see in digital. Um, but you still make out like you can still see uh, the texture of his skin. You can see these some of these smaller details. But what I really wanna draw your attention to is this little flaring here, this sort of red glow on this sharp highlight, uh, sharp contrast, anywhere those sharp edges and, and contrast of luminance, we start to see that halation there. Um, so our goal in recreating this film look and this film emulation here is to recreate some of these effects. Um, we see the grain, you see color in the highlights, we see halation, we see a softness to the overall image. And another great example of that halation is this still, uh, from Django Unchained and you can see just this was obviously was also shot on, on real film and the glow and just that, that flaring coming from these harsh edges between shadow and light uh, in this tree here. I mean we see that just bursting through there's not any sharpness there's not any detail in that in that fall off between shadows and highlights um, and just the color is constantly bursting through. Um, so there's not really any rules to this unless you want to be 100% technical, but you know me, I'm, I'd rather we'll just have a, an image that I think looks good. So that's what we're going to be doing and recreating here in this one. So the first element of that is making sure that our image softness is dialed in. Uh, we don't want it to be too sharp. And so we have our Gaussian blur here. And I think it might be fine as is. I'm going to just a, a rather highly detailed area. Because uh, also whenever you're determining how much blur you need to add, it's best to work on an image or a part of the image that is actually in focus and as sharp as can be, because that's going to determine the overall effect, because it wouldn't make sense for us to you know, use this blurry section of the screen, uh, section of the frame to determine our blur intensity. So you want to work on an area that's actually sharp. 
Um, so for now, I think this is going to be a close enough effect for us. And the next thing we're going to do is going to be, we're going to start to build off of that halation. And I'm actually going to do it in a compound node. And the reason for doing it in a compound node is that it's going to be more than just one step. Um, but I want to be able to control it all as, as one node, essentially. And I also want to be able to go into that node and make changes later if I need to. But I just like to keep a, a clean node tree if possible. Let's go ahead and label this one our blur. That's our blur node. And we're going to add another serial node. It's going to be Alt S and Alt S again. We're just gonna go ahead and make these a create compound node and that's gonna put them into this little compound node you see here. It's gonna send it out sort of as one signal and continue on as one signal. You can disable it and re-enable it. We're just gonna label this one halation. And now to go back into this compound node, we're gonna go into show compound node and now we can make all of these changes within it and it bounce back out whenever we need to. So there's a couple different ways to add halation in Resolve using the built-in tools. And one of them is a little bit more complicated using two CSTs. And what you're essentially doing is converting your camera space into a linear space, making some changes to the image and then converting it back from linear into your camera space. Um, but I wanna keep things as simple as possible. So I've actually uh, kind of come up with my own version of that that I think will be a little bit simpler for most of you to follow and eliminate some of the chances for you to mess anything up. So we're just gonna go ahead and grab our eyedropper or our qualifier, excuse me, and our luminance is gonna be the only tool we're using. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this. So we're just gonna go Shift H, and we're gonna drag our low end up, 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 until we start kind of getting rid of some of these shadows, and then turn on that low soft. We're gonna bring this up a touch. And right around here, we just wanna get rid of those shadows because we really just wanna be working on uh, sort of anything mid-range and up. Because as we noticed in the, uh, the still here from Django Unchained, almost all of that halation is happening in the upper regions of the image, the upper mids and, and the highlights. It's not so much happening in the shadows, except for where we have that convergence and that, that fall off between shadows to highlights. Um, so we're going to be covered there just by qualifying the highlights. So this is our qualification. It's just using the luminance slider. And now we're going to go into our sharpen tool and in the blur tab, we're going to deselect the link red, green, and blue channel, and we're gonna start working on them independently. And the reason for that is that halation usually has a bit of color to it. So by working on the red, green, and blue blur separately, it's gonna give us a little bit of a tint if we do it right. So we're gonna zoom in here to an area where there's some sharp contrast, this area with her highlights, or her hair, sorry, um, contrasted against the shadows in the background. And then also it's gonna be great because similar to that ring in uh, the other original still, we have this sort of gold highlight that's being hit directly by the sun and it's gonna be pretty reflective. So we're gonna to get to recreate pretty accurately uh, some of that halation that we saw in those stills. So in our radius tool, we're gonna to go ahead and take our red slider, bring it up just a touch and same for the green and then same for the blue. And we're doing these at just slightly varying levels because we're almost, you could think of it as sort of like gain. We're adding a little bit more green than blue and we're adding a little bit more red than green, which is gonna give us this sort of yellow, uh, just warm, glow around some of these sharp edges. So this is looking pretty decent. And you can see the difference we made here, uh, especially on these, these little tiny little hairs here. As we enable and disable that, we're starting to, to bloom those out, which has given us that bloomy effect. And uh, we're really starting to see the halation do his work. So before and after, super small change, um, but anywhere there's sharp details, especially like right here in her arm, this is looking really good. We're just softening off those edges. Now the other technique that I like to use, I'm just gonna combine them here within this compound node is another OFX tool. And this one is actually called Edge Detect. And so we're just gonna drag this on. And at first, obviously it looks terrible. We're gonna make some changes here. We're gonna set the mode to grayscale edges. We're gonna take the threshold and bring this up a little bit because this is just showing us all the edges we're gonna be blurring here in a second. Uh, and then we're gonna take our smooth and just kind of soften this out a touch. And we'll come back and, and make more changes there in just a minute. Uh, now we're also gonna select edge mask overlay. And as the name implies, this setting is going to overlay the edges that we've detected and, and this outline that we've sort of added to them. And it's gonna overlay that on top of our original image. So we get this. Now this is obviously not exactly what we're looking for yet, although it is a cool effect. And if we play through, you see it follows those, those lines and those edges. But obviously for what we're trying to do, we're, this is not halation. So we gotta make some changes here. Um, now first up is gonna be selecting the color. As you know, we have that warm tone that is really gonna get us in that ballpark of a real uh, filmic halation. And these are again, using simple tools. There are more technical ways to do this. I just wanna show you guys a, a simple method that gets the job done. So we're just gonna take this color and drag it all the way into the top right, as red as it can be. And we're gonna take our luminance and just pull this down just a little bit. It's gonna give us a little bit of a deeper red. And now in our smoothing slider, we're just gonna smooth things off a little bit. 
right around here. And now we're starting to see the overall effect take place. The denoise strength is going to help us eliminate some areas where it may think that noise is actually an outline or an edge. And so we don't want that. So having this turned up to about 0.2 is going to be a good place to be. Now in the global blend, we'll start to pull this back and really start monitoring the effects here. And this is going to give us a much better idea of what the, the final result is going to be. Um, so as you see, I do like the way that these edges are looking. They're they're started starting to bloom in that sort of red color. Um, I do think I want to bring it to be a little bit more orange, though, especially after seeing that that's still from Django Unchained. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, maybe leave the threshold where it's at. Yeah, I like where it's at now. Um, maybe increase the smoothing. And we have the brightness, of course, as well. And that's going to also help with the intensity of this effect here. So now let's see, let's zoom in over here and we're doing some really good work um, with her shoulder. If we just disable these two nodes that we've changed here, that's not bad. One thing I'm, I'm starting to see is we have the, uh, the edge detect effect taking place in the shadows, which I don't want. So to eliminate that, we're going to go back into our qualifier. Actually, to save ourselves from having to qualify everything again, let's just take the mask from our first node and drag it to our second node. So what that does essentially is it just copies our composite information from the first node, which is where we set our qualifier. So we just eliminated the shadows and it sends it over into our second node as well. And I actually do want to limit this a little bit more than it already was. I'm gonna soften it out a touch more. And just so we're, we're getting rid of even more of the shadows there uh, so that we're only affecting the highlights with these two nodes. So now just looking in this area where the, a lot of these highlights are, cause that's where we're mostly going to see the changes take place of the, uh, the halation there. We're getting a really, really nice effect. And this is looking incredibly filmic and we haven't even added green yet. So, uh, I'm really liking this. So now we're just going to go ahead and close this down. We're going to jump back into the original node tree. And as you see here, um, actually I do like to typically leave the halation effect stronger than it needs to be so that in the halation compound node, I can also go back into our node key tab and in our key output, pull that slider back and just adjust the intensity to wherever I want it there. Um, that's an easy way to do it all in one step. So now we're looking pretty good. I like where this is sitting as is. Let's add a couple more nodes just to continue adding on and building this film emulation effect. So the next thing we're gonna do is add our glow node, which is a must for me. I pretty much am always adding a glow node, whether it needs it or not. Um, and we're gonna use this tool in a couple different ways. One, it's going to give us more of that, that softness and just that, that creamy look that we would resonate with film. And the other thing it's going to do is it's going to help us tint our shadows in a slightly different hue. I want to give them sort of this blue and cooler tone um, to counteract the, the orange highlights that we have here. And again, that's totally optional. And this is a totally subjective step. That's just me looking at this image. That's what I want to do to this image. So we're going to take our shine threshold. So that's a zero. And now we're going to take our composite mode and set this to soft light. And now we have a very different effect than what we originally started with. Um, another thing I want to do is take our colorize tool and this is going to select the color of our glow. You know, right now it's just white and we want it to have a tint to it. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a teal tint and you see the changes taking place as I'm dragging this around kind of our hue picker here. And that looks pretty good to me. Now we'll go to our global blend and we'll just pull this back a touch right around here is good. That's another thing with film. You're usually going to see some blooming in the highlights. And so this is another nice effect to add there. And it's going to give us that bloominess to the highlights on top of our halation. So I'm going to go ahead and label this one in glow. And you can spend a lot more time with this effect, just dialing it in and getting it exactly how you want it. But for me, this is pretty good as is. Um, the last thing we're going to do after our CST and LUT is we're going to add our grain. And our grain is going to be the final step here because as we talked about earlier, um, label that grain. As we talked about earlier, the grain is going to be I mean, on the actual film, it's a chemical process that's happening and it's going to be, it's going to have its own characteristics regardless of how sharp or in focus the actual image is. Um, so because of that, I like to add it last uh, whenever we're doing a more technical film emulation. So we're going to select grain, drag this on top, and uh, we're definitely going to want to zoom in here just to, to get an idea of exactly what we're looking at. Um, so we're going to set our film grain preset. I'm going to start off with a 16 millimeter 500T preset. And we're going to increase that size a little bit. We're going to increase that strength. And for the texture, may even increase this a tad. And then for our softness, we can, uh, we can make it as sharp or as soft as we want it to be. Um, but overall, I want it to be kind of big and, and sharp. Um, so that's going to give me the result I'm looking for. 
So let's see, now we can take our saturation. As I mentioned, some grain is saturated. Um, so if you don't have a super noisy image to start off with, you can make this look even more realistic by adding some saturation to that grain. And so that's looking not too bad right there. And the advanced controls, you can of course uh, control the effect of the grain, the intensity of the grain in your shadows, midtones, and highlights. I'm leaving it all as neutral right now, just to keep things simple. But that again, if you wanted to take this to the next step and go even further with your grain optimization, you can do that here. And then global blend, I'm just gonna pull things back a touch. And that's gonna give us, yeah, that's looking really authentic, if you ask me. Um, it's a really authentic emulation of film, I would say. So let's go ahead and just play this clip back a couple of times. And the last couple of things we're gonna do in this video is we're just gonna watch through this clip and then we're gonna go one by one in each node and see how it affected our image. So we're playing through and we've got this beautiful grain. I hope you guys can see it coming through on YouTube there, but it looks absolutely stunning right here. Um, we have this halation that we've added, I mean, everywhere over here in her shoulder. This is looking fantastic. The highlights hitting her face, uh, this, just the, right, the way that the sun is hitting her eyes here. And then you have the, the sharp edges and contrast from his shirt highlights to the shadows. We have this incredible glow and overall the image is just, just the right amount of softness. Um, just, uh, I'm a huge fan of the way this looks. Um, so it's an excellent process, pretty easy to follow. You see, we really didn't do much grading um, personally. If you wanted to customize this look from here on, what I would do is kind of just set all these, the actual practical emulation nodes, leave these separate. And right after the primaries, we'd add a second node. And if, for example, you wanted to make it uh, a cooler look in the shadows, we just take our lift, cool things off. And then in the gamma, maybe keep our, our skin tones nice and red. And if you wanted to give our, our highlights sort of a green tint, you could do that here. Um, so just tiny changes in the primaries. And we have taken, uh, well, we already had a, a beautiful looking image and given it a totally different look. We've got this green cast overall. Um, so that's how I would customize this look going forward. But I like it as is, and we really didn't do much at all ourselves other than just adding the effects, uh, adding that foam LUT, and then making some changes in the primaries. So let's go ahead and go through one by one in order of operations and see how we built this look from the start to finish. So first off, we have our CST, and this is taking our RE log C, converting it to Cineon film log, which enables us to properly apply our LUT. This is our film LUT, and the film LUT we used here was in the film looks tab, Rec 709 Kodak 2383 D60. And then our primaries tab, this is where we started to brighten things up and sort of lift up our shadows just to give us a little bit nicer contrast. Uh, we also took our highlight slider because film is gonna be a little bit darker in the highlights. It, has, it does a little bit better job of protecting the highlights than digital cameras will. There's a much nicer roll off there. So we took our highlight slider, put, pulled it back a little bit and then increased our shadow slider as well. And then in our saturation node, uh, this is where we went into our RGB mixer, maxed out the sliders, and then controlled the effect of that saturation by adjusting our gain and our key output in the node key tab. Next up, we applied a blur, and this just takes off some of the sting of that sharpness uh, of digital footage. Even though it is shot on RE, it's still gonna have some of that digital effect, that a little bit over sharpening there. Um, so this just softens things off for us a little bit. And then next up, we have our compound node, and this is where that film emulation really starts to take place. So this is the effect overall of the two halation nodes. And one area I really wanna draw your attention to aside from our shoulder is the eye right here. If we disable that, you see how we add that warm glow to that sharp contrast in highlights and shadows? That's exactly what halation is all about, and it is a beautiful effect. Uh, we did that by qualifying the highlights, kind of eliminating the shadows, and you'll see that with our luminance slider there. And then in our blur tool, we increased the red, green, and blue blur. We took it up to add some, some softness to those highlights. And then we sent that qualifier to our next node where we use the open effects of the edge detect. We added some color to it, softened it out, and then sort of just applied this, this overlay, this color overlay onto the edges in our image. And took it one step further, we're only doing that to the bright edges by sending that qualifier into this next node. The next thing we did was add a glow let me zoom back out so we can actually see this. Next thing was our glow node, and we also tinted that glow with a sort of teal look, a very soft teal, and that just gives us this nice result in the shadows, uh, being a little bit more complementary to the skin. And we have a little bit more of a blooming effect in the highlights, and that's easily seen over here uh, in this area, in this window, we started to bloom that out. And so just overall, excellent look in my opinion. And then the last thing we did was of course, add our grain. And this is kind of a must have if you're gonna be doing film emulation, um, I selected a uh, 16 millimeter 500T uh, grain preset. We increased the texture, the size, the strength. We also uh, increased the softness, I believe, just tried to get it sort of realistic based on the stills we had pulled up earlier. 
and then added some saturation to the grain as well um, because the image was clean enough for us to do so and then pulled back on the global blend just a touch. So all in all, if we disable this, here's our complete before and after. But let's go ahead and check out the final look. All right, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Don't forget, we do have a limited time offer on the Freelance Colorist Masterclass. We're offering 35% off from August 11th to August 18th, so do not miss out on that opportunity to get yourself signed up. Again, that link can be found up above in the description below or pinned in the comment section. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel for more awesome tutorials, and I will see you guys in the next one.